all the way to AMH. Now you could input input these uh, literally one after the other, but I'm just going to go CIN to AMH. But I could instead, if if my variables weren't in an order, I could add other variables like AFI, ARG, DJ, W, and I would just do it that way with a space between. But in this case, because I know that I have the 9 and it goes from CIN to AMH, I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that's actually all you have to input uh, to do this analysis. I guess it's a fair bit of work, but trust me, it's worth it. This is the best way to determine how many eigenvalues or how many factors or components you should extract from your uh, data re reduction analysis. So the next thing you need to do is click Run. All right, so that didn't take long. This is, and the reason why it took very little time at all is because it's just using the random number generation approach rather than the permutation approach. The permutation approach does take more time uh, f for the results to be produced. Uh, so this is what the output looks like. It actually generates another uh, SPSS file that actually has your uh, the, the the roots or what the component components are 1 to 9 because there are 9 variables there are going to be 9 components necessarily uh, but I don't really look at the SPSS data file I look at the output that's generated so the first thing that comes out it's telling me it's the number of cases is 89 that's the sample size um, it's sample size in this case I've actually got monthly values going back to 1984 I believe number of variables is 9 there are nine listed investment companies in the data set. A thousand uh, data sets have been generated, random data, and I've got my percentile here specified at 95%. And then we've got our, this is really the meat of the analysis, the raw data, this is actually calculating the principal and component eigenvalues on the correlation matrix that it corresponds to the actual data in SPSS. So these are the eigenvalues you'd get from doing a normal principal component analysis through SPSS. So the first component has an eigenvalue of 3.39. The median uh, eigenvalue associated with the Monte Carlo simulation or the parallel analysis is 1.51. And then at the 95th percentile, so this is the 50th percentile, and this is the 95th percentile. We have an eigenvalue of 1.6767. So it's always going to be larger. The tail, if you're thinking of a distribution of eigenvalues, the 95th percentile is always going to be larger than the uh, 50th percentile. Uh, and in this case, the first component based on the real data, you know, the real correlation matrix is 3.39. And because that exceeds the 1.68 rounded, uh, we say that that's a statistically significant eigenvalue where P is basically specified at P.05 or 95. Uh, we got the 95th percentile. Now the second eigenvalue is 2.50 rounded and the 95th percentile benchmark criterion eigenvalue from the Monte Carlo simulation is 1.44. Again, larger. But then by the time we get to the third eigenvalue, Based on our, our actual data set, it's 0.9958. But the benchmark criterion, what we're trying to beat to be statistically significant, is 1.29. So because that value is larger than the estimated from the correlation matrix uh, eigenvalue, we say that there are actually only two uh, components to extract from the actual analysis that we're, we would do subsequent to this. All right, so these are the raw data eigenvalues. This is the 50th percentile from the parallel analysis slash Monte Carlo simulation, and these are the 95th percentile. And we can adjust that. If we think 95% is too strict, we can reduce that to 90th percentile or 75th, whatever we want. Now, what this syntax does automatically is it actually produces a scree plot for you, which is nice. Uh, produces a scree plot. And these are the raw data. It says raw data here. You might not be able to see that, but if you do it yourself, you'll see that the the, the blue line is the raw data eigenvalues. So that's those are the eigenvalues that correspond to your actual correlation matrix from your sample. And then these two lines here are intersecting with the scree, and it's those eigenvalues that are above 
these uh, these competing eigenvalue lines, which are from derived from the Monte Carlo simulation. Now the green line, the lower one, is the 50th percentile, and the higher line, which is a light brown.